아. 헤이 싱가포르 do you know what is the number first thing that we love to complain about? The hot weather cannot tahan now. Even when you have the aircon on, sometimes also feeling very frustrated. I just totally cringe at the video. It's horrible. I cringe at his language. I cringe at his lack of enthusiasm. Simply the worst advertisement I've ever seen, ever ever. All right. Uh, anyways, uh, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the classroom. It's Mr. Low, and today we're gonna move on to the next topic, which is heat. You know, so it's it's relevant to the advertisement. I just didn't I didn't just show you the video for. Uh, for no reason, right? And it's a topic that's really close to our hearts because, you know, living in Singapore in a tropical country, you know, we are always experiencing a lot of heat, high temperature. You know, these are the two keywords that is relevant to this topic, heat and temperature, yeah? Uh, but at the time I'm recording this is in June. You know, June, July, if, if, if you live in Singapore long enough, you would know roughly June, July and uh, about August, September period, that's when the temperature is always at the highest. Yeah, and uh, it's crazy. All right, so in this uh, topic, we're going to learn about heat and temperature, as I said just now. What is the difference between the two of them? How do we measure temperature? And what can heat do to objects? And what are the good and bad effects of heat? All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's get right into it. You know, uh, heat and temperature is something that we we are very familiar with in our everyday lives. Uh, maybe you already know some of the knowledge here, but uh, but do pay attention to all the things that we have learned. You know, to just see how much you know and how much you're gonna learn, right? So for this first topic, you know, five point uh, the first part of it, five point one, we are going to see the difference between the two words temperature and heat you often use this too you know the temperature is very high there's a lot of heat but what is the meaning of this too right let's quickly take a look first of all temperature you know the meaning of temperature is temperature is a measure of the degree of hotness the degree d-e-g-r-e-e -E, of hotness Right, degree of hotness of an object. Essentially, it's like saying, uh, it's to measure how hot something is. You know how hot or how cold something is. Okay, so this meaning of the temperature, I think you should commit it to memory. That means you should memorize it because in exam we might ask you, oh, what is the meaning of temperature? And you should be able to explain to me. You know, temperature is the measure of the degree of hotness of an object. Right. On the other hand, let's look at heat here. Heat. You know, we we learned in the previous. A few topics of energy. One of the type of energy is heat energy, right? So heat is a form of energy. Alright, heat is a form of energy that flows. You know, energy can be can can flow, can move from one place to another, right? That flows from places of high temperature, high temperature, to places of low temperatures. Okay, so it always is always true, uh, it always flows from uh, place hot places high temperature places to low temperature places okay so if I know I don't know if any of you have been to a campfire before you know you, you have the campfire here right and then you are standing somewhere far away and you can feel the heat you know coming from the the fire because uh, yeah because the, 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 the fireplace there the temperature is high high temperature while you know people surrounding it the campfire are at places of lower temperature so heat energy always flows from uh, places of high temperature to places of low temperature this is why you can feel the heat coming from the fire or, or you know if, if you have a kettle that's boiling and you stand near it you can also feel the heat from the hot water yeah all right let's go back to temperature yeah Okay, temperature can be measured using what? This one everybody knows using a thermometer, yeah? Of course, uh, thermometer now, the thermometers nowadays come in different shapes and sizes, different, uh, there's digital, there's non-digital, right? Thermometer, right? And we're using it, you know, day to day, measuring our temperature because of this COVID situation, right? Right, um, this thing, this part here, you need to take notes, huh? temperature has units, SI units of Kelvins, 
Now, I know a lot of you are very tempted to tell me degrees Celsius. Yes, this is the common units that we use when measuring temperature. For example, my temperature, my body temperature today is 36.6 degrees Celsius. But um, uh, 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 in science, you know, when we talk about temperature, the SI unit, the standard unit is not degrees Celsius, but instead it's Kelvin, right? Uh, a couple of things to take note here. Number one, it is not, it is not a degree Kelvin. Okay, so we do not write degree Kelvin. That is wrong, right? So, uh, so do take note. It is not. It is, there's no. There's no degree here, right? It's just Kelvin. Okay. Second thing, even though we commonly use degree Celsius, you no know, degree Celsius is not the SI unit. Yeah. So degree Celsius, which is degree C, is not the SI unit. Okay, which means SI means a uh, standard international units. Yeah, internationally we don't agree that degrees Celsius should be the units because you, if you know in in the states, you know what kind of what kind of units do they use for uh, for temperature in the United States? Uh, if you watch enough TV, you will know that it's Fahrenheit. Okay, they use a totally different units there. So what is the standard here? Okay, we use Kelvins as the standard unit. So do remember. Okay, don't get confused. Okay. Alright, and uh, heat, you know, cannot be directly measured. Like, you, you cannot just measure. You can feel heat coming from something, right? From a fire, you can feel it. But uh, there's no instrument to just measure oh, how much heat is there. Uh, there's, there's no way to do it. But temperature, how hot or how cold something is, yes, you can use a thermometer. Yeah? Alright, and here goes. This is what a thermometer looks like in the lab. Very unlike the one that we're using, the digital oral thermometer. Okay, so let's learn the different parts of it. You might have seen this before, right? So first of all, you have this part of the this part of the thermometer. Okay, this part is what we call the bulb, B U L B, right? Now it's not a light bulb, even though it's the same word. Okay, but we use uh, the word bulb to describe this part of the thermometer. What does what does it do? We will see later, right? Okay. Then you have this part, right? This part here where you see the reading. This is where you, you read off the, the temperature, right? Okay. This part at the center where you see a red color fluid coming from the bulb, yeah? The, the, the bulb, it contains some red color fluid. It will move up the narrow tube. This part is called the narrow tube. Okay, moving on. Ah, so how do you read off the temperature? If, I, if I'm looking at this part, okay, the liquid is up to here. How do we read off? We root get the scale, right? So three most important part of a, a lab thermometer that we need to know. Number one, the bulb, which contains the liquid that we will use to read. Uh, the narrow tube, in which the the liquid will flow up. You know, will, will travel up. You know, the higher you know that the higher the temperature, the more it will travel up the narrow tube. And then we will use the scale to tell us to read you know, what is the thermometer uh, temperature just like a ruler right you can see you know this is 30 degrees 40 degrees 50 degrees so on and so forth okay so in the bulb what does it contain typically it contains alcohol now you may read from somewhere that uh, uh, especially uh, old, old websites or old textbooks you know um, in the thermometer sometimes it contains mercury now mercury is a it's a metal that is liquid and is silver in color. Now in the past they used mercury as the liquid inside the inside the thermometer. But slowly it got phased out. That means people stopped using it because mercury over here is very toxic. Okay, it's highly toxic. If your finger or any part of your skin comes into contact with mercury, it's highly absorbable into your bloodstream and you get and it's toxic to the human body. Uh, you can get Poisoned, okay, from mercury. So nowadays, uh, we, we we don't really use this anymore. Okay, mostly it's just alcohol. All right. So um, when when the bulb, you know, when you want to measure temperature or something, you know, you put the bulb into the the, the liquid, for example, you know, like okay, so this is the liquid, right? It's sideways, but you get what I mean. So if I put the 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 bulb into the liquid that I want to measure the temperature, uh huh. The alcohol will then travel up the narrow tube when temperature rises. 
right? So as temperature goes up, you know, the the uh, the liquid will go further up the tube and then you see a higher temperature, 30, 40, 50, 60, so and so forth, right? So, opposite, right? The opposite. The alcohol will move down the narrow tube. Okay, it will move, sorry, it will move up when the temperature rises. It will move down the narrow tube when temperature falls. This one is, uh, yeah. This one we all know. This one is quite, quite intuitive, yeah? This one we all know. Alright, moving on. The temperature is measured by the therm uh, the temperature measured by thermometer above is okay. So here we are tasked to read this exact temperature over here. This 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 guy here, right? What is the exact temperature? It's exactly in between 20, 20 is here, 30 is here. It's exactly in between. So it must be exactly 25 degrees Celsius. Alright. Now I know just now we say that the standard units for temperature is in Kevin's. But for all the thermometers that we have, we measure either in degree Celsius or degree Fahrenheit, depending on which country made it, right? But in Singapore, uh, the type of thermometers that we use is uh, uh, in degree Celsius. So please do not forget the units, okay? So let's have a note here. Note, don't forget the units. Forget units. Alright? Because uh, in exam, if you write down just 25 without telling me the unit, uh, marks will be deducted. Uh, because 25 what? You see, uh, the examiner won't know it's 25 Fahrenheit, Kelvin, degrees Celsius, donkeys. Right? Uh, you won't know. You must write down the units very clearly. Alright, so next. Okay, at least measures the temperature of water, of water at different states. What does it mean by different states? Uh? So let's make note down over here. Different state tells me is it liquid? Yeah, is it is it solid, solid, liquid, or gas? Okay, this what is what it means by state. Huh? is it solid, liquid, or gas? Okay, using a lab thermometer. Now, of course, here is water. So solid water. If it's solid state, water in solid state is ice. This one we all know. Huh? Water in liquid state is just the water that we drink. And water in gas state, what is it? What kind of substance is that? Ah, water vapor huh? or steam some of you may be able to tell me all right so at least measures you know ice uh, liquid water and steam at uh, 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 using the thermometer right and the temperatures are shown below identify the substance in which the thermometers were placed in so the the question is asking you know looking at the temperature is it ice is it liquid water or is it uh, water vapor or steam right okay so let's look at the first one the first one, the temperature is about, you know, there's this temperature here, if you can look carefully, it's somewhere between 35 and 40, between 30 and 40. So first of all, what is the, what is the melting point and boiling point of water? If you recall, I don't know if you learned in primary school before, but melting point of water, which is when ice melts into liquid water is zero degrees celsius okay zero degrees celsius while the boiling point what at what temperature does water boil ah uh, this one you should know 100 degrees celsius all right so you may want to note this down by the side all right so the temperature will tell us uh, which state is it in you know because if the temperature is below zero or zero or even or below negative temperature uh negative region of the temperature you know that it must be solid ice right if the uh, if the the liquid the substance is 100 degrees Celsius and above uh, then you know that it must be steam water vapor right so here uh, what is the temperature okay we, we can't exactly tell whether is it 35 36 or 37 let's just use 36 degrees Celsius for example sorry yeah, this uh, this image cannot we can't we can't tell exactly right so we say it's about 36 degrees Celsius. So therefore it must be liquid water, huh? tap water, right? Because it has not frozen nor has it evaporated. Okay, next one. What is the temperature here? Uh, this one is very clear. This is zero degrees Celsius exactly. Zero degrees Celsius. So the substance must be uh, ice, right? Or solid water, yeah? Okay, moving on. The next one you can guess already. This is at 100 degrees Celsius. So it should. So uh, let's write this down, and the substance should be steam. 
all right so it's like gas it's water in gas state yeah okay great so we know how to read the thermometer this one is quite quite a simple one right now there's this um another device that you can use to measure temperature it's called a data logger it's like a electronic device it's a machine um that uh we haven't really seen it before i'm not sure if i've seen it before okay but uh i i i i have not right in real life at least so it's, it's another device that you can use to measure temperature all you do is you have this sensor over here that that looks like a stick all you have to do is you know like dip it into the liquid that you want to measure for example you dip it inside and then the uh, the machine will read out the temperature will register the temperature for you okay how exactly it works uh, this one you will learn another time okay so they're used to automatically keep track of temperature over a period of time now not only the um, over a period of time so it means uh, I can let's say the the temperature of this liquid here changes like let's say it's cooling it was very hot you know it was cooling now I can place this sensor in and turn on the data logger is able to track the different temperatures as time pass by you know so so if let's say the the temperature and time let's say it started off very hot you know and then over time it start to cool down the temperature start to cool down ah, this data logger is able to track and then later we can connect it to the computer and we can extract the data to tell us oh how does the temperature of this substance change over time okay so they are digital and it's more um, what to use than the thermometer I would say it's more accurate okay it's more accurate you know because they give you a very precise number and they can tell you even over time how does the temperature change okay so in your notes you will see this QR code is a video to show you you know uh, someone using the data logger to record the temperature of melting ice right starting from negative temperature all the way up to zero then you see that you know the ice start to melt and you can see from the computer screen how does the temperature uh, increase with time I'll put the link in the description below because I cannot just uh, show you over here the email be copyrighted yeah so please do take a look you know you can actually see how does how a data logger looks like and how it uh, is connected to a computer okay all right moving on so we learned about heat we learned about temperature all right but how is heat exactly related to a temperature all right so first thing um, we learned just now that heat always flows from regions are places of high temperature to low temperature that's one way they are related to each other yeah the way that the heat will move or flow depends on the temperature itself all right next okay of course when an object gains heat its temperature will increase or rise right so its temperature rises or increases also can this one we, we all know is very intuitive right you turn on the, the flame and you try to heat up you know water you will expect that the water temperature to increase right when an op the opposite right opposite when an object loses heat what will happen is temperature will decrease ah, so this one is quite intuitive right okay so gain heat temperature rises lose heat temperature decreases okay now there's an exception here please take note um, except when the substance is changing state what does it mean by changing state ah? okay there are two possible cases when it's uh, four possible cases when it's changing state remember from the question just now state just means that it's either solid liquid or gas right so when a substance let's say water when it's changing state it can be either uh, melting or it can be boiling or what's the opposite what's the opposite of melting ah you may be able to tell me sorry i can't hear you over you know over this video but it's freezing and the opposite of boiling is condensing okay ah, condensation uh, condensing right so these are the four processes 
you know, when uh, a substance will change its state. So for example, melting, right? Melting is changing from solid to liquid. While on the other hand, condensation, condensing is changing from gas to liquid, right? So during these four processes, you will learn next time, its temperature does not change. Uh, so the, the temperature remains the same or remains constant. Constant means the same or no change, right? So during these four processes, you know, or, or in general, when the substance is changing its state, the temperature remains constant, okay? Now, you may want to go back to the video just now. You can see that at a particular time, when the, it, the, 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 the temperature profile will look something like this. Huh? Okay, starting from ice, you know, uh, starting from ice, it may be in the negative region. As it heats up, the temperature will increase. But you will see in the video, if you look carefully, there will be a point whereby in time, uh, a period of time whereby the temperature does not change. Okay, you can see in the graph. Right, then after that, the temperature will continue to rise again and then when it starts to boil, the temperature does not change. You can see that it's horizontal. The temperature never changes with time. Okay, so this is an interesting phenomenon. But why is that so? This is upper side concept, right? So don't worry about it. Just know that there's a such a thing. Alright, so for example, when heating of water starting from ice, you know, so from ice is solid, yeah? So uh, in solid state, the temperature of the water remains constant at uh, what and what even though and uh, constant at the remains constant at uh, I think we can just write down constant at 0 degrees Celsius oh, oh, oh sorry okay I know it so it remains constant at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius why is that so because this part is melting and this part is boiling okay so during remember during boiling and melting there's a, there are changes in state you know so at these two temperature which is uh, exactly here 100 degrees celsius and zero degrees celsius you see that uh, the temperature does not change even when the water is uh, absorbing heat so even if you uh, uh, if, if you continue to heat up using a fire you know for a period of time when it's melting and boiling or, or boiling the temperature does not change right so this is just a fact for you to remember okay now uh, next thing uh, the next way that temperature and heat they are related to each other is the amount of heat energy depends on both its temperature and uh, depends on the temperature and as well as its okay technically it's mass uh, okay or, or, or yeah it's how much how much the sub how much substance is there okay let me explain okay using these two example okay in beaker a and beaker b we both have 100 cm cube of water okay same amount of water which actually is the same mass, la, same same weight uh, of water. Okay, same amount of water. And in beaker A, you see the difference here is beaker A the temp the water temperature is forty, and beaker B the temperature is at ninety. Or rather, the water in beaker B is at ninety degrees Celsius. So, which one is which one has more heat energy? Right, which one has more heat energy? Clearly, you, you may be able to tell me that the water is the is the water in beaker B that has more heat energy. Why is that so? Because that it is at a higher temperature. Okay. Now, so what does this tell us? Uh? This tells us that if I have the same amount of substance, you know, I might be water or something else, if I have the same amount of substance, and one is at a higher temperature, which is in this case 90 degrees Celsius, then the one at higher temperature would have more heat energy. This one is very clear, right? It follows, it is, a, it is uh, consistent with what we say just now, because when an object gains heat, its temperature will be higher. So, the other, the other way around, if I have two, uh, two objects, or, or, or two, two containers of liquids, right? One is at a higher temperature means it should have a higher heat, higher amount of heat energy, right? Okay, so 
So this is the part when you say that the amount of heat energy depends on the temperature, right? Higher the temperature, more heat energy. Okay, moving on. So, next. Container C are bigger C and bigger D. Now, the similarity is that both are at the same temperature now. Both are at 50 degrees Celsius. But you realize that in bigger C, there's more water than bigger D. So now, which one has uh, more heat energy? Clearly, it must be water in bigger C because it has higher mass. All right? It means more amount of water. Right? Okay. So here, this part is to tell us that uh, the amount of heat energy depends on the mass of the object. Here we're using we're using different volumes of water, but you know that you know the more water there is here, this one is higher mass, uh, heavier, right? Higher mass, All right? Okay. So um, yeah, and we said just now, right? This one heat energy will flow from regions of high temperatures to regions of low temperatures. Okay, until. Ah, this is the part that we did not describe just now. Until when? Does it go on forever and ever? No, it does not. Until both regions reach the same temperature. Okay. Ah, so if you don't quite understand this part, let's look at this, this example here. Okay, we have two solids, right? Two boxes that are made out of the same material, right? One is at 50 degrees Celsius, one is at 30 degrees Celsius. Clearly, this part here is at higher temperature. So we see that all oh, heat energy will move from, from the left to the right. Okay? Because, yeah, heat will flow from higher to lower place, temperature places, right? So, until when? After some time, these two boxes will have the same temperature. Okay? Ah, so when they come to a time where they are the same temperature, heat energy will no longer flow because heat energy will only flow when there is a higher temperature place and there's a lower temperature place, right? So assume that they are the same and same substance made out of the same material and same volume, then what could be the final temperature of these two guys? Remember they must be the same, yeah? So if you use some form of mathematics, you know, estimation, you will know that, oh, it's the average between 50 and 30. So the answer could be, could possibly be 40 degrees Celsius. So it's like the, the temperature kind of average out. But remember, this is only true if these two, um, these two boxes, these two objects have the same material, made out of the same material, and they have the same size. So let's take, let's note by the side, yeah? this one is quite important, yeah? So note, okay? This is only true. That means 40, 40 degrees. That means the temperature will end up at 40 and 40. Only if. Uh, it's only true if. One. Uh, if the objects. Are. Number one. Made of the same material. And two, they have the same mass. All right. So only under these two conditions, only only then will I get exactly forty and forty. If let's say they are made out of that different uh, uh, different temperatures, then it may not be exactly forty. Maybe it could be uh, thirty-five. It could be. 42 you know but for sure for one thing for sure is that these two temperatures must be the same okay but what number is it exactly it depends on the material and the amount of uh, and, and the mass of these two things okay so this one we will not discuss any further just know that I think the, the main thing that we should know here is that you know the heat energy will not flow will continue to flow from high to low until both the places have the same temperature of which then uh, heat energy will just stop flowing from there all right so 
I hope you learned something today. Let's recap a bit. Okay, today in this lesson, we learned about the difference between temperature and heat. These are the two common terms that people tend to uh, tend to mix up. Yeah, okay. So we learned the difference between temperature and heat. We learned about the different parts of a lab thermometer. We learned how to read uh, a lab thermometer. We discussed about this thing called data logger. Please do go and watch the video uh, here. Okay, later I'll link in the description below. And you know, since we talk about heat and temperature, how are they related to each other? How is heat related to temperature? You know, so we, we learned one thing here. This is one. This is, and this is uh, two. And over here, lastly, is three. Okay. All right. So I hope you learned something. If you are still a little confused, you can rewind the video and, and, re and look through again. Or we can discuss when you meet back in school. So that's it. I hope you have fun. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.